my name is Scott Sander, uh, Daybreak Anchor at Wish TV, but a uh, big time fan of the Indiana Historical Society. And I have, for whatever reason, thought it was a good idea to maybe help out with hot pepper history. So, my topic is the origins of the word Hoosier. What do we know? What little do we know? So, I think it starts with this habanero sauce, right? Okay. Down the hatch. There's some heat there. So historians have this love-hate relationship with the word Hoosier because it spins off wonderful tales, but nobody really seems to know from whence it came. Everybody has a story about the word Hoosier, but it seems like nobody has the story about the word Hoosier. So we'll start with the most well-known and well-worn tales. First, perhaps most famously, from favorite son, James Whitcomb Riley. The notion that this all sprung out of a a violent confrontation in some long-ago settler's tavern that the mayhem reached a point where an ear was cut off and the tavern owner reached down and picked it up and theatrically said, Who's here? And that became Hoosier. Or the, uh, the settler's greeting when they'd get a knock on the cabin door instead of flinging it open, saying hello. They'd say, Who's there? And that became Hoosier. But apparently the historians think that's nonsense, much like Riley's, because Riley clearly was playing it for a lark. But people insist that it's true these years later. Then there's the apparently plausible but somewhat dull explanation that there was a canal contractor by the name of Hoosier who employed so many men there were Hoosier's men, which later became Hoosier's. Again, sounds like a reasonable explanation, but the historians have said it's nonsense. The truth seems to be that the words this evolution or whole cloth uh, in, invention intended to mean the person of particular substance that the settlers would have considered themselves, self-reliance, bravery, courage, and the like. Between the late 1820s uh, and the early 1830s, there were several references published of the word Hoosier that had at least similar spellings and similar meanings enough to make us believe that it's all the same word. Some of them spelled it Hoosier, S-H-E-R, some H-O-O-S-I-E-R, but used often enough in the same way to think it means the same thing. Richmond's uh, John Finley, uh, mayor at the time, wrote a poem in the 1830s called Hoosier's Nest, and this actually got some national acclaim, long poem, but it included these lines. One side was lined with divers' garments, the other spread with skins of varmints. Dried pumpkins overhead were strung where venison hams in plenty hung. Two rifles placed above the door, three dogs laid stretched upon the floor. In short, the domicile was rife with specimens of Hoosier life. And in that description, it may also hint towards sort of a darker interpretation of of Hoosier. To this day, it is decidedly an uncomplimentary word to some. The way the word is used, for instance, in and around St. Louis, Missouri, if you've not been there, just go and call yourself a Hoosier and you'll get bizarre looks to their... There, to this day, calling somebody as a Hoosier, uh, a Hoosier is to brand them as, as low class, no account, and good for nothing. Lately, there's also been this twist in the tale. Indiana's two U.S. senators, one Democrat, one Republican, have agreed completely on at least one thing, and that is that the people of Indiana are correctly called Hoosiers, despite what the U.S. government publishing office says. The publishing office considers us Indianans. Kind of a cumbersome word, but that's when anything published from the federal government, we are called Indianans. And at one time, even Jacob Pye Dunn, who was the state's top historian of his time, he argued for Indianans as well. But that argument faded, and now, here very recently, uh, Senator Joe Donnelly and Senator Dan Coats have come together to petition the U.S. government to now, and always, whatever the origins, refer to us as Hoosiers. May I have some milk? (laughs) It's like Victory Lane.